Hey guys, it's COD Master Swigger 666 here, and today I'm bringing you guys another COD commentary. Now, before you even think about continuing with this video, click that subscribe button if you are not already one of my drones, or, or, or I mean fans, and be sure to slap the piss out of that like button. And remember, for every dislike, a kitten dies. Now, I would like to give a shout out to this person because he donated two thousand dollars to me, so I would give him a shout out. So, nah, I'm just joking. But craptastic Jack here, and today I want to talk about YouTube whores. Now, I'm just going to be covering the gaming whores of YouTube. I know there's Idrisine and other people like Shane Crapson. I don't know, but whatever, these people, and, uh, I'm not sure about Smash, Smosh, I don't know about them, I don't really watch them, but whatever. Now, I'm just going to be covering the gaming whores of YouTube, the ones that only care about money and don't give two shits about their fan base. Now, I've gotten a few I would like to point out. We've got PewDiePie, we've got basically ev almost every GTA Online YouTuber ever. I know there's a few out there that aren't like this. But the big ones, like Lipsy Jimmy, Lipsby, Lipsby Jimmy, Mr. Boss for the win, and all these other people, that basically, Kranos, Kranos, he got banned though, so, mm. but yeah, and we also got people like Woody's Gamer Tag and White Boy. Now, if you do not know these people, they started out as normal YouTube gaming channels. They got popular and they basically are now living under the YouTube Dala. <laughs> I like to pronounce it Dala for whatever reason, I don't know. And why am I playing with a flash drive? I don't know. But living off YouTube isn't necessarily bad. It's risky, I'll give it that. But I know one of them, YouTube gaming people, uses it to pay off his college fund. Which is all great and all, but... Uh. No. But the things these people do in order to get even more subs is disgusting. Like asking for likes and a sub bef and a like before the video even begins. It's just a way for video makers drones to bring the video up in the search rankings for GTA Online. I'm just talking about the GTA Online people right now. And hold up, I got a burp. <coughs> that part's getting cut out, but um... Now, by all means, being on the top of the surge rankings for something is good. It can help you get lots of fans and views. But it should be up there if people truly like the video. If people like it out of their free will. Not because they were asked to. Now, at the end of all my videos, I ask the viewer to rate, comment, and subscribe if they want to see more content. And I am in no way asking them for just a like. I would like... I would like likes, but that sounds redundant. I do like likes, but I am asking them to rate the video. There's a difference between rating the video and asking them just to like the video. If you dislike the video, you are still rating it. You are doing what I asked you to do, even if you're disliking the video. Also, I am not just telling you to subscribe. I am, ask I am asking you to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. If you don't, then you don't have to subscribe. Simple as that. Anyways, to sum it up, asking for likes and subs before the damn video even starts is just disrespectful to the viewer as it is like commanding you to like and subscribe. It's almost like they are forcing you to do it. It is also like rating a movie 5 stars before you even started watching the damn movie. Ay ay ay, iced tea time. Shameless plug, Turkey Hill iced tea is the best ever. Alright. Next thing a YouTube whore does that I dislike. Misleading titles. For example, somebody posted a video about a GTA Easter egg when it was just a symbol for an in-game company. But the title remained the same. GTA Secret Easter Egg. Even after the Easter egg was disproven as fake. But Now, misleading titles. Why are the fans not offended by this? I mean, really, if I were watching a Black Panther video entitled Need for Speed 2015 Lead Gameplay, and all I saw when I clicked on the video was him sitting in front of a camera eating soup, I'd be pretty pissed off. Unless it was for parody purposes. Now, if it's for a parody video, that's fine. But if I click on a video called How to Unlock an Easter Egg or to find out a secret path in a game, I don't want to click on the video 
with a title like that and end up watching someone fail at delivering what was in the title. Like, example, they're trying to find an Easter egg to make it seem like it's actually there. When they fail, I'm like, oh, I can't find it. Maybe you guys can find it. When it turns out it's not even there in the first place. Oh, my God. Now, and it, the example I gave first was a small one, and it could have been in intent unintentional, but I need to scroll down, and, yeah. But, the moment you find out that the Easter egg was a hoax, you are obligated to change the name of the video or add something to it that says it was proven fake. Like in the video, you can do the same thing, but at the end of the title, you can have something that says proven fake or misguided or something like that. You Or you just don't keep it up like that online. You, even if it's disproven, and it still says GTA 6 Easter egg, you still shouldn't have to, you should change it even if it's proven that it's fake. And yet people don't do that. Oh my god. One last thing I hate about YouTube gaming horrors, and this is directed to the GTA online horror bags who post the same shit on their channel after one posts it. For example, I'll give you an example. Say Faggot Bags XX99 posts a GTA exploit video. Then Evil Tit Bag 876 posts the same video, only with a different gameplay and with his voiceover, with his own voice, and it keeps going on and on in an endless cycle. Then the next exploit comes on, and the same thing goes over and over again. This has this has press this process has caused massive glitching and exploits in GTA Online that have caused the GTA economy to suffer. Now you have people running around with $900 million stuffed inside their bank accounts and there's nothing for them to do. They can buy anything without even earning it. And it's basically ruined the GTA economy. And it's also caused the game developers to delay the release of heists because Rockstar figures why bother releasing heists when everyone could just sell a car a couple dozen times and become rich. And they're still going on today. I mean, back when it was early, back in October-ish area, when people were starting out, okay, maybe, just to help you get a little boost, but they're still going on with it today. And that's what I can't figure out. I mean, they, because of this, GTA Online is now boring. Because Rockstar, why release heists if people can just sell stuff or glitch a couple times and bada bing bada boom bang. Now, there's a difference between exploiting and farming. Farming, I'm fine with. At least you're doing stuff in order to get the thing. I mean, one time, me and my friends, we did coveted a couple times on a, when it was a double XP. We got a bunch of money, but that was used to buy stuff for the next thing. But it's not like we exploited or anything. We just farmed when we had the opportunity. <sighs> oh, my God. I just had to vent there. If these YouTubers did not post all the glitch videos and exploits, GTA Online would have probably be a better place and it would probably be better off without these people as all they do is talk about DLC that ends up turning out fake, posting exploit videos, and posting unfunny GTA Online Let's Plays. Let's face it, they're really, really, really unfunny. Now let me end this commentary by asking you guys to send this video to someone who is a fan of one of these people. They are a cancer to the YouTube com gaming community, and I just don't think they should be long. I mean, all these dishonest YouTube commentators going around GTA Online. It's mostly GTA Online now since that's the most mainstream game mainstream game out there right now. And basically, a game that's mainstream, there's going to be people just waiting to cha-ching, cash in on it. I mean... I can't wait to see these guys' channels when GTA Online dies down in a few years and the next big mainstream game comes on because, wow, these people, these YouTubers, they really need to go away because, honestly, they're not proven good for the community. All it is is cha-ching, money, boom. That's all it is for them. They don't give a crap about their fan bases no matter how much they tell my oh, I don't, I... I support my fan base a lot. When they actually don't, they actually don't care. They don't do anything like that. I mean, channels with maybe like over a hundred thousand subs now are proving to be, uh, and that's really. N there are a lot of honest channels that are over that size, but still, the way these people run their channels and the tactics they 
used to gain subs and stuff like that. You can tell I'm improvising right now, but still, I have to add more stuff to this. The way they're doing this, the way they're conducting business on YouTube, it's just sad. It is sad. And I I can't. I, I can't. Ugh. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a good one.